episode of the UFO Show. We head to the Apache Sitgraves Forest to get the inside scoop on one of the most legendary UFO encounters. Come with me as I spend the afternoon with Travis Walton, and he tells me first-hand accounts from his famous 1975 incident. And you can get Hollywood's version in the adapted docudrama, Fire in the Sky. Spoiler alert, contains nudity in a phone booth. What's up guys, I am Amy Dumont. Today we've driven out to Heber, Arizona. You may have heard of a little movie called Fire in the Sky. It all went down right here. And I'm gonna talk to the man who's made this town famous, put it on the map, Travis Walton. Let's go talk to him. Thanks for inviting us to your, your town. You, you've been here your whole life or, or most of it? Uh, well, no, I, I, I came as a, a freshman in high school. Okay, but this is, this is where you call home. Uh, yeah, this, this whole area here, I've you know, spent many years, uh, even from the very start, working <laughs> in the woods here as uh, they call us lumberjacks, but <laughs> there's all different kinds of occupations uh, that uh, do with a chainsaw in the woods. Some of that's petrified since you last been logging? Uh, <laughs> <Just> <laughs> it's not been that long. <laughs> and I'm not the designer of these uh, green statues. but you, uh, you could have taken claim for them, you know. Uh, no, that's not my design. <laughs> okay, well that, that's, yeah, so, but it's your incident that, that inspired, has inspired uh, these inspired, designs. So you can yeah. take partial credit for yeah, that. Yeah, and people from all over the world come here and, and buy these statues. And it's interesting. Sure, because, you know, obviously not everybody has... Nobody has your story to tell. But if they could just have a, a little piece of the, the culture, you know, and yeah. make up their own story mm -hmm. if we don't have one like yours. Um, will you take us to show us kind of near the area or where, yeah, where yeah. stuff Yeah, this happened? is the town nearest where it happened, okay. so it's, it's not very much of a drive mm -hmm. out to where it happened. And, you know, back when I was working in the woods, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Heber was our starting point. I mean, we would go to the various forest contracts, but... Uh, uh, Let's head on out there to the to the where it happened. Okay, let's do it. Our adventure is just getting started as we head down State Road 260 and off into the woods. My the first big story that I remember as a kid, because like I said, I was too young when when the media attention first started with you was communion, you know, when they had the, the book come out and everything. And I remember my mom reading it and I was young and I was saying, What is that? And she was kind of vague, which of course made me when I was old enough want to read and that was my first interest into wanting to ask questions. Well I think that whole perspective on alien presence as some sort of a horror story is part of what led a lot of people to resist believing it, you know, mm -hmm. because they don't want there to be monsters out there, and uh, I don't believe there are, you know. Some people just uh, interpret it that way. You know, something, well, it's the unknown in general. It's always it, scary. It's strange, so, you know, they're terrified. But, you know, the unknown, whether it's, you know, a political agenda that someone isn't quite doesn't understand all the way or yeah. whether it's you know a, something a, even a foreign culture that you know or a foreign yeah. species if you don't understand it it's, it can be terrifying to somebody and there's going to be resistance yeah. well i was the same way it took me years to get past the idea of calling it an abduction mm -hmm. and it was uh, you know I think now more of a 
more of an ambulance call than, a, than an abduction. It, it was just an accident that precipitated yeah, you're, you're, events that wouldn't have happened otherwise. The, the timing of, of everything li lining up, of you just being right there. Uh, how long do you feel like it took you to kind of uh, absorb what happened after after you t came back? Well, it was a long, slow process, and you know, one what, what coming to that understanding intellectually uh, came first, and mm -hmm. then trying to uh, get my emotional response to catch up to my intellectual understanding of it, you know? Sure. Because, you know, I could understand that, you know, circumstances don't point to it being so horrific, but, you know, the, the memory of the trauma and the fear mm -hmm. really colored my feelings towards it for a long time, but... Uh, yeah, do you feel like it was in phases that you had? Yeah, it was in phases, and you know, there were, it was a dawning awareness, you know, mm -hmm. one thing was the fear that there was going to be some serious medical consequences mm -hmm. to getting hit in the head with 500 million volts, you know? Right. Uh, and it didn't materialize, you know, I, it actually started to, much to my surprise, go the other way. You know, I was never sick. you mentioned that you went to, you know anonymously to a brain specialist after have you been to any have they checked for any implants or anything and, you know I hear about this implant stuff and although some people may get implants I don't think that uh, aliens need that in order to keep track of people mm -hmm. um, we have these little cell phones we carry around with us yeah and um, the, um, the the data center up there uh, in, uh, I think it's Utah, uh, um, is basically recording every single electronic communication on the face of the earth. And we got 8 billion people here, and with comparatively primitive technology, sure. our authorities can keep track of 8 billion people. So I would think that uh, a really advanced civilization would be able to keep track of all of us. No problem. I used to scoff at the idea. People say, oh, I saw this thing when I was eight years old, and then, then I had this other incident when I was 25. And, right. and I, I, oh, come on. They, like, you know, I thought, you know, we're like ants on an anthill. They, yeah. You know, they don't, they're no respecter of persons. But actually, I think they are. I think that, that if you saw one you, when you were five and you saw another one when you were 30, mm -hmm. they know it's you. Well, so what, what's it been like? I don't know if you know any of, of my history, but so for my in my twenties, I was a professional wrestler, and I haven't I've been retired for many years. But it's kind of defined my adult existence because they're like, oh, you're you're the wrestler, you know, and it's this one thing, and there's many facets of you and who you are, but this one thing is kind of what people identify with for me. So how how does that? affect you with everybody they're not you know that's what they want to know about what they want to talk about <laughs> or have you just accepted that that's just the way it is or does it annoy you some days or, or uh, well you know I could uh, moan and cry uh, and complain but what's that good is it gonna do me you know yeah. people say do you wish it been oh, what good does it do to wish it didn't happen what's that you can shit in one hand and wish in the other and yeah <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Same with me. It's like if you just go with it and let, you know, the people there, are most most of them, I know that, same, I have haters or people are trying to with, with have resistance, but people are more just curious and want to know or, and. People I knew well would pretend they didn't see me and pretend they didn't know me. Now I go out and people I barely know pretend we're old buddies from way back, sure, you know? Sure. That's funny. <laughs> and get a picture with me. So so I guess you could say that's better, you know, but there's a price to, that comes with it. There are people who just to have some claim to... Right, they I, know the guy that knew the guy. Yeah, I know the guy, happened. so they'll yeah. make up stories. They, they, uh, the Wildwoods, the people probably told you about some of those stories, you know. This guy says, yeah, I used to work with Travis on the log landing. And every day he'd come in, he'd take his hard hat off, and 
he put aluminum foil inside that. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, bull. <laughs> Why would I put fresh aluminum foil in there every day if I thought I needed to shield my brain with aluminum foil? Uh, it's just made a good story. Yeah. And, you know, but I know the guy and, you know, we work together. And I can't tell you how many high schools I went to. I only went to one, but it's <laughs> yeah. like I went to high school with her. I'm mm -hmm. like, um,. Lasseter, Marietta, because that's the only one I went to. A guy saying, you know that, you know that homecoming party in the movie. You know, I was at that party. Oh yeah. Well, that, that was just made for the. The party was fiction. <laughs> you know, there, there never, we never was a party. So, so uh, I don't know how you were at it because I wasn't. <laughs> Amy, this was the uh, Turkey Springs contract, and you know the springs are down low here. Okay. But we had finished much of the uh, contract down below. There okay. were places up there where we were working that day where I could actually see San Francisco Peaks over by Flagstaff, mm -hmm. which is you know the highest point in the state of Arizona. Yeah. So when's the last time you were were back up here? Oh, this has been quite some time, but uh, I came out here. Um, with my son on my motorcycle mm -hmm. and the strangest thing happened you know it's like you know 45 50 miles to get this far but right when i got to the contract here boom motorcycle just shut off like like you turned the key off well so when do you remember right when when you were seeing the lights and not knowing what it was were you guys having the classic like the electrical problems with the car or was it being weird no or actually like that? you know i i yelled at mike stop the truck because he didn't see it you uh -huh. know and he stopped, and uh, I guess it, he turned it off because it went off. Right. Uh, so do you still keep in touch with, with those guys then? Uh, yeah. I, I hear from them uh, now and then. Uh, um, Steve, I talked to him on the phone just about a week ago. He, he was upset. with Every time he hears a rumor that he knows isn't true, right. uh, he tells me about it. But, but, and John, I heard from him. He, he's a long-haul trucker. He got jumped. Some drug guy who tried to rob him with a knife. And he, he had a picture of the knife on the... On the he showed him that he messed with the wrong... He picked the wrong <laughs> yeah, person yeah. to uh, bring to a knife fight. Yeah, the guy uh, definitely got the bad end of the deal and was an unsuccessful robbery. <laughs> So, I mean, does it feel, are you feel comfortable being back out here again? Well, this you know, I've, I've definitely adapted. You know, I've been forced to come here. It was very traumatic at first. Yeah. And, you know, I felt a lot of apprehension in those first visits. But over time, I, you know, you got a whole different attitude towards it. You know, that, that it was um, probably not nearly as, as a, as a um, a, a deliberate thing as I thought. Um, at the time, um, there was uh, the theory that, you know, that, the, that this craft had actually fired an, a weapon at me, mm -hmm. you know, that they, they were like threatened by my approach or something like that. But uh, there's other information that come out that points me in a different direction. Um, uh, uh, last year, I was I saw a bolt of lightning come out of a clear blue sky, and I thought, oh yeah, that, that can happen. And the significance of that is that this area right here of the Mogollon Rim, mm -hmm. seven thousand feet elevation right here, yeah. has the second highest frequency of lightning strikes of any place in the entire continental United States. Oh wow! So that's very significant to me. That even though uh, it was clear weather uh, that day. There's a possibility that um, the craft had created some sort of an energy field that attracted a blast of lightning to it, and I was just the secondary ground. Right. When I, I said, stood when you up, went to like kind of make closed, a run for the truck. Close that distance. Yeah. Then that secondary discharge, you know, probably you know injured or killed me, and so in retrospect, perhaps I was just taken aboard to to fix a problem that they had accidentally been a part of. Well, uh, I mean, and what are your thoughts on the, the ships themselves carrying electromagnetic, you know, presence themselves? Oh, and, definitely, I would say right. that there, there'd be a field there. Mm -hmm. You know, back in those days, we didn't have cell phones. You know, nobody had something to take a picture of this thing yeah. with. But uh, uh, there's, you know, the, the walking along that rim road, 
if you stand next to a tree where you can see it's been hit by lightning, mm -hmm. it'll have a big rip in the bark, yeah. a hole. Like uh, split the tree in half? Yeah. Or split the tree? Well, it just it's a line that just mm -hmm. blows. It turns the sap to steam so instantaneously, it just blows the bark off the tree. But if you're standing next to one that's been hit, you can see the next one that's been hit. And if you walk to that one, you'll see the next one that's wow. been hit. There's so much frequency of lightning strikes. I did a show with um, um, Rob Lowe and, okay. and his sons. Uh, they were out investigating unusual events and stuff. And after my episode was over and he was introducing the next lady, she was uh, dealing in crystals. He goes mm -hmm. to these crystals and people believe they have mystical properties. And so Rob's sitting there saying, you know, Travis told me that he thinks the aliens were in that area uh, looking for fulgurite. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, I was totally astonished because I didn't know what fulgurite was. What the heck is he talking about? So yeah. I went online and looked it up. Fulgurite is uh, a type of crystal that's formed when lightning strikes the earth and you've got millions of volts and millions of degrees instantaneously taking those minerals and forming substances that uh, don't occur geologically. Oh wow! So it's actually is a likely reason. For, so and that for would be prevalent be here then. Because yeah, you of know, because I had researched for... underground water, mineral deposits, every kind of thing. There's even reports that you know these uh, presence of these craft here go way back. There's some um, some uh, petroglyphs carved by the Indians before any Europeans arrived here, uh, depicting scenes of uh, the aliens and the, and the craft. So this is all fitting together with the idea that this um, accident that injured me mm -hmm. uh, had something to do with this uh, strange uh, fr high frequency of, of lightning strikes in this area. Wow. So you, the phone booth is still around in town where, where you were... Where you made your call to get res yeah. rescued? Can we can we go by there? Or show us. Yeah, that? let's. I'll show you where it was. You know, um, one one little detail that uh, you know, uh, uh, just to clarify things, mm -hmm. the Hollywood embellishment of okay. having me naked in the phone booth. <laughs> nah, I, I was still wearing the same clothes. I remember you said you you feel the warmth from the, from of your clothes still when you're kind yeah, of coming yeah. to. Yeah, I felt and the cold air kind of... coming into my clothes, so I knew I hadn't been laying there. Yeah, on the highway too long. It was dramatic. I can picture the the naked in the phone booth. It did. It was a good. Pic, a, I think it was a, a nice artistic license. But yeah, okay. But we'll just <laughs> clarify that. So we head back into town to see the original phone booth, where a fully clothed Travis Walton reunited with this world. Well, these phone booths were a part of this. Uh, uh, gas station behind us. It was a uh, before you could get tacos. You could fill you could fill up right here. Yeah, it was an Enco, uh, which was, became Exxon later. Okay. And then this whole slab uh, that these uh, these uh, phone booths are mounted on was right about here, and it was dragged over to here. But it's kind of a local monument. It, it remained uh, intact for a long time. Uh, here a few years ago. Um, the, uh, uh, I was looking into replacing the, one of the phone booths that was mentioned, uh, uh -huh. the, the actual phone. And a local employee from the phone company went into the storage unit and got this phone and put it back in here. But he opened the coin box and all of the coins were pre-1975. Oh, wow. So, you know, it, it was probably the very phone booth. I came yeah. in a big panic and I went into this one first and it was out of order oh man just like it is today i, I was at the end of my rope <laughs> and then i came over here in this one and it worked but in those days you know you didn't even have to have a coin to talk to the operator you just you know hit zero and uh, and make a collect call and so i did you called your brother right? yeah my uh, brother-in-law and uh, he got the family and uh, I must have passed out because it seemed like, you know... Well, you were finally somewhere safe, right? Was, and, and They found contained. me on the floor of this phone booth. It seemed like immediately that, uh, that you know, it takes a half an hour to get here. Sure. Okay. Well, so, yeah, I like this is like an unofficial monument, if you know, but there's not a, 
a plaque. There's no movie poster behind here. It's just the straight yeah. backstage chart. I'm interested in uh, you know getting a little restoration done on it, replace some of the broken glass and stuff. Uh, I think some of the vandalism that's occurred here is a, an expression of people's fear of the incident, you know? Well, you know, you can't have nice things. We try to have these nice roadside attractions and you come in and take it in. Uh, somebody might have backed into that as an accident. That's one thing. But, you know, the, the rock that came through that window, uh, you know... It was not an accident. It was no accident. <laughs> So this is kind of the conclusion of, of the movie here, and it's very well known. Um, the biggest UFO museum, Roswell, of course, they're going to do a tribute there with, with, with these phone booths? They're going to do this style of phone booth, okay. uh, you know, same make and model mm -hmm. as part of the exhibit, uh, you know, as a tribute to this incident. And uh, the one thing in the movie uh, where I was uh, found naked, mm -hmm. it wasn't raining either, but... Uh, I think I think you know the the nakedness is sort of an apt metaphor for the uh, sort of uh, scrutiny that uh, was coming from the entire world at that time. You know, looking into every little thing you ever said or did in your life, and trying you know, to who's ready you. for that? Yeah. You know, they're gonna they're gonna say you know <laughs> come up with every story. Right, you come back to Earth n naked in the rain, like worst uh, case scenario, right? Mm -hmm. Just getting so proof. you feel very exposed. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these stories come out, and a few of them were even true. Well, yeah, we've got to go. We'll have to go visit. Maybe I can come. You say you, you visit Roswell once a year. Have yeah. to go once once your monument is up. The, the anniversary of the Roswell incident, uh, uh, they you know have an annual uh, international festival. They do it. Up. They like to party in Roswell. And people come from all over the world there. Last time I was there, I had people coming from Finland. Uh, England, lots of people in England and various places in Europe uh, and uh, all over the world now. Well, I can either That's give you a you. ride back to town or unless you just want to make a phone call and have someone pick you up, <laughs> <laughs> we can no, head back. Or... I'm done with that. These phone booths are... are, are uh, all three of them aren't going to work today, right? Uh, they're just a local monument and uh, no longer functional, haven't been for years, but I am going to look into some restoration work. I think that's a good plan. Well, thanks so much for talking to me. It's been really nice and showing me around firsthand and maybe go get some tacos or something. Yeah. <laughs> Wrestling fans, you all know about that other big-time wrestling network. Well, there's another. Um, excuse me, we are not a wrestling network. Right, that may be true, but wrestling fans everywhere should know about Asai TV. With shows like Good Brother with the Big LG and Family. The Bennett, featuring Mike and Maria Bennett. The UFO Show with Hall of Famer Amy Dumas. A Travel Show with Eva Lise. Legendary wrestling promotion OVW. Lockdown living room comedy show featuring Puppet the Psycho Dwarf, plus other shows with a wrestling touch such as Wrestling with Ghosts. Go there, eat that, toy life, and many, many more. So, wrestling fans, it's time to add a new wrestling network. We are not a wrestling network. Right. We're not a wrestling network. Not at all. But, kind of. Subscribe to Asai TV now, available on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and at AsaiTV.com.